If you are still resisting switching to Gutenberg, this video is for you. I'm going to explain exactly what Gutenberg is, how you can go from the classic editor to the new Gutenberg editor, and why now is the best time to make the switch. All right, so let's jump right in with what is Gutenberg. So Gutenberg is actually the code name that was given for the WordPress update that introduced the block editor. And it was codenamed Gutenberg is kind of a nod to the inventor who created the printing press because it completely changed how books were created. And this block editor completely changed how WordPress blogs are edited these days. And so it made it much, much easier, much, much more functional, much faster, but there is a learning curve. And so in today's video, I hope that you are going to learn that and be excited about making this change and implementing this on your own blog. So the block editor allows you to customize every single element of your blog without the need for extensive HTML or additional plugins that give functionality. It really streamlines the process even though there is a learning curve, I promise it does make it easier, um, and took away the need to have, again, that, that knowledge of coding to still create a beautiful, functional blog post. Again, each element of your blog post and blog page, including your front page, can now be designed with this block editor. So in the past where you were dealing with just one large block and then you would make edits within that, you're now able to think of each piece as its own block. So your H2 headers are now their own block. Your image is now its own block. Your text, which is considered a paragraph block, is now its own block. The functionality here is that you are able to move things up and down. You are able to change text color or text size or even the background of these blocks without, again, having to add a bunch of HTML. This, again, will make it easier, I promise, hang with me, but it does give a lot more functionality to composing blogs as well as editing and or updating your old blogs. In addition to the standard blocks, which are going to give you functionality and design opportunity, you also will now have plugin blocks based on whatever plugins you are running within your WordPress blog. So things like your Mediavine recipe card or WP recipe maker, uh, affiliates, table of contents, Yoast, Link Whisper, WooCommerce, all of these are now creating their very own blocks that you can easily insert into your content again without the need for a bunch of HTML or short codes. This is adding all of the functionality so that your blog can grow with you. You may have a blog now that you wanna add a shopping cart to. The block editor makes that very, very simple. Maybe you're wanting to start doing more with affiliate marketing. This block editor makes that very, very simple. It is the functionality of Gutenberg that makes it so appealing. But my absolute favorite part is the reusable blocks. And this one element is actually why I changed to Gutenberg as soon as it was available back in 2018 and have loved every minute ever since. Um, so the reusable blocks, the way that this works is that you create a block the exact way that you want it and you save it as a reusable block. This means that you can insert, just like you would insert any other type of block, into any piece of content that you are creating, post or page. The great thing about that, though, is that you can go into any of those posts or pages and update that reusable block, and it will immediately update the block on every single post or page that it is on. Another enormous perk to the block editor is the ability to create post templates. Now, what I mean by that is you are able to compose a new post or page and lay out all of the blocks that you want to use. You can then save that entire structure as a template. So the next time you go to compose the same type of post, you implement that template and it's automatically built in for you. This is great for food bloggers, travel bloggers, review bloggers, uh, and also if you are creating content clusters to create your pillar page. 
I'll show you that at the end of this video. All right, couple quick questions. Number one, what happens when I convert to block editor or turn off the classic editor plugin? The answer to that question, as of right now, is absolutely nothing. And I'll show you in just a minute. When you turn off the classic editor plugin, it is going to take all of the pieces of content that you have and put them in one classic block. This means nothing should break, nothing should be messed up until you go in and manually convert to blocks. And that is what I am going to show you next. But it is okay to turn off and to, to deactivate and then delete the classic editor plugin. Number two, why can't I just use classic editor forever? Well, they are not going to be supporting that plugin forever. That's the number one reason. I think they keep pushing the date back on when they are supposed to get rid of it, but I want to encourage you to embrace the new because it really is worth it. I acknowledge there is a little bit of a learning curve. I get it, but I promise you the reward is far greater than going through a little bit of the growing pains of learning. Uh, you will be able to grow your blog significantly, have so much more functionality. And if you just embrace this, I promise you it's worth it. Uh, why do some things not convert properly? Great question. That is because um, the coding that the old blog post that you have, it's outdated. So the same way that you, know, you, you can't get um, updates on your phone sometimes if you have a super old phone or other technology, that's what's happening. So when I go into the dashboard, I'm going to kind of show you how that happens, um, why that happens and how to fix it. And then how long will it take me to learn this? That's gonna be a little bit different for everybody, but I promise you it is worth it and I am here for you every step of the way. So you can reach out to me and you can leave comments or you can join our Apogee Facebook group uh, where I will be asking or answering questions in there as well. All right, so let's hop over into the WordPress um, dashboard and I'll show you all of this in action. All right, so here is a post on the Apogee blog from back in 2011 that has not yet been updated. So as you can see here, we have one block and it says classic. And when you either convert, update, or turn off that editor, this is what happens. So you can see in this post, uh, it is all one editor the same way that it used to be. When you click on it anywhere, you have this option up here that says convert to blocks. Until you click that, everything on your site as of the recording, which is October of 2022, uh, will stay exactly in this one singular block. When you hit convert to blocks, everything goes again into its own individual block. So you're able to see at the top here, each one of these blocks has its own editor. Here's a note, if that does not pop up immediately, come over here to this top right hand side, you can put top toolbar, spotlight, or full screen mode, okay? Uh, the spotlight will only highlight what you are working on. And the top toolbar means that all of your editing happens up here instead of directly on top of the block. Personally, I like to have the top toolbar turned off because I want my functionality to kind of go with me. And I turn off spotlight mode because I want to be able to see it as one big post. Okay, so this particular post did not have a lot in here that needed to be converted, but you can see here that that changed into code. All this was, was an image. And it was an old image that, again, we're in 2011 here, um, so the coding is no longer needed. So all I would need to do is either edit the coding. I could go in here and just edit, whoopsie. And then, why is this not showing? There we go. Uh, and then it will be able to show the image again. What I did there was took out the coding that is not 
relevant anymore to 2022. Um, so that is the way that you would edit. Um, but let's talk about some of the functionality that I now have here. So each one of these posts is considered a, a paragraph block. But if I wanted to, I can hit enter and then I can come over to this little plus sign on the right hand side or the one in the top left hand corner and insert the type of block that I want to add. So maybe I want to put an image in here. So that pops up with my image. I can hit the media library or upload. Uh, here's one of the campaigns we have going on just, just for. Okay, so, and that updates with the image. Now I can move this up or down. I can replace the image. Maybe I don't like that one. I wanna go with this one for Ecklers instead. Very, very simple. Um, I can align. And if I wanted to align and then put my wording on the side, see, I just grab that and make it whatever size that I want. These are big images because we use them on, uh, on social. Um, but you can see here how it automatically puts it uh, aligned left because I chose that here. You can link the image, you can crop the image, you can add text, um, you know, all kinds of good stuff here. And then of course you can also remove it. You could do the same here. Let's say that I wanted this particular block to be an H2. Maybe this is a keyword and I'm doing SEO. This one, obviously don't ever H2, H2, H2 this, but what you would do here is click on paragraph and this allows you to change the type of block that you're working on. So then I could just hit here and then I can actually choose what level of heading that I want. Okay, and then I can also change it back to a paragraph. I can bold, I can italicize, I can link. Uh, I can also insert different things here, pretty link, strike through, all kinds of good stuff. Okay, another thing that is really, really neat, a long time ago, bloggers used to use H2, H3 as more of an aesthetic to make things stand out. And unfortunately, back then, we did not know that was gonna be terrible for SEO. I was guilty, I did it. Uh, so what we can do now is you choose the, the block and over here, you can actually change, um, again, the, the design. So you can make the text big, you can make the background a certain color, uh, and it gives you that design. No longer do you need all of that um, HTML and editing to make the design um, exactly what you wanted it to look like. And then you would just hit update. All right, so let's look at another one um, that has a little bit more media in it, maybe like a YouTube video um, or a social mention or something like that. Okay, so here's a little bit newer of a post. This one is from 2017 that I have not converted yet. Uh, so you can see it's got a little bit more in here. So what I'm gonna do again is hit classic and then convert to blocks. And so what that's done is it pulled out this coding that no longer matters. So I'm going to delete that. Where is my delete? Remove, there we go. And then it put in the um, short code for the YouTube. But I actually wanna update that because I don't want that to just be a, uh, a short code, even though that's what it pulled from the old coding. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit enter and then I'm going to search YouTube. When I do that, it's asking for the URL, which is right here. So I'm gonna, oops. I'm going to copy that and put that directly into the YouTube. So, and then I can get rid of this block. Okay, so what that does is gives me the most updated and the one that will continue to update the YouTube post. So this looks exactly the same. When we come down a little more, we have an H2 here, and this has been considered a list. So you can insert, you can have your different levels here. Uh, again, another H2 and your paragraph. All right, so let's talk about composing a new post. So when you go to add a new post, this is what we're gonna see. This, you will not see, that is what I have our site built on, but 
um, let's talk about composing a new post and then also dive into those post templates because I think you're gonna love this. So uh, I am a former food blogger, so I'm going to say this is the best recipe ever. So that is our title. That's going to be our H1. And all I have to do is hit return. And then I'm going to have an intro paragraph telling why this is the best recipe ever. Uh, of course, I would use my keywords and all that kind of good stuff. And then I hit enter again. And I would always have that intro paragraph with no links. And then I would put my hero image. Uh, so we're gonna pretend that there's an image there. I'm gonna hit enter again. And under that first image is where I would put my affiliate disclosure, um, which was a reusable block. So we hit add block and I'm gonna hit browse all. And then here is where I have my reusable. Um, since we are not affiliates ourselves here at Apogee, I have some other ones, but this is where you would be able to automatically insert uh, your reusable block. So we'll use an invitation for the Facebook block or for the Facebook group. Okay. And then, oops. And then next, yes. I went there. See? So if that happens, you can just move it up just like that. Okay. So my, um, I would have my affiliate disclosure and then I would have another paragraph as to why this is the best recipe ever. And then I would do my table of contents. Um, like that. And then continue on with my post. So maybe this one is best recipe ever ingredients. Um, I did not spell that properly. D-N-I-E-N-T-S. Okay. And that would be an H2. Okay. And then I would have a list, which I want to code this to be a list. And then I would have ingredient one, ingredient two, and so forth. Well, you know, sometimes I'd be like, okay, wait, I need to add one more note in here. So I can say something like grab all of these ingredients and let's get ready to cook. Full um, recipe and measurements are below. Okay. So if and I have Grammarly that is doing this, by the way. Okay, so um, I had a little section that if they wanted to, if they were standing in the grocery store or making a list or something, they had my little list. So, and then next it was time for another image uh, and so on and so forth, okay? So building out exactly what you want in your post. So food bloggers, you can have substitutions, any equipment that is needed, how to store, how to freeze, uh, can you make it ahead, all of those kinds of tips. And then of course you would have your recipe card down at the bottom. Uh, you may also have an image for Pinterest that you want to put in there. You can put all of these pieces together and then again if you choose to add something new, something goes longer, no problem. You just keep adding and kind of rearranging those blocks. Okay, so if we're making a template, we've got all of our blocks laid out and we want to recreate this over and over and over again. Every single time we do a recipe, it's gonna be laid out just like this. Our audience is gonna love it, but also we make sure that we get all of those little minute details into our recipe post uh, that Google loves and that we need to have to give the best user experience to anybody who is creating this recipe. So what we're going to do, and this part's a little tricky, is hold the mouse and you're gonna to want to select, but we need the blocks to actually turn blue. <laughs> All right, see how the outside of the blocks are turning blue as I scroll down? This is a mouse issue, just like that. I would do that for the entire post and then click here and hit group. Now, 
what that does is it puts all of these, and I would do the entire thing when I don't have a mouse being finicky, uh, and do one big solid group, almost like the classic editor used to be. And then what you do is you're going to want to add to reusable blocks. So when I do that, I would make this the recipe post template. Like that. Okay, now I have that reusable block as one reusable block, but it's really a template. So what's going to happen? And then this is the second best recipe ever. And what I'll do here is browse all, go into my reusable blocks, and now I have the recipe post template. And there it is. So the first thing that I'm going to do um, is convert to regular blocks. And now I can move them, but it took all of the elements from that other post and put them now into my second post. So again, I can make sure that I have everything that I need in this one too. So I'll admit there's probably a million other things that the WordPress block editor does, but these are the most common things that you are going to use as you are composing new blog posts and pages. Again, I know there is a learning curve and it can be a little bit scary, but the functionality and the overall product of what you can do with a WordPress block editor is far greater uh, than holding on to that classic editor from 2008 or so. Uh, so again, if you have any questions, you are welcome to ask them in the comments below. You can send me an email to lindsay at apogeeagency.com or you can join our Facebook group for our Apogee Insiders where we have, where you can ask questions there as well. All right, thanks so much. Let's everybody get rid of Classic Editor, convert to the WordPress Block Editor. Mm -hmm.